Welcome to Ground Control. Okay, so we're still talking about this Crossover RX AR3207G micro receiver, 7 channel receiver, has a built in 3 axis gyro. Um, this is courtesy of Crossover RX. I want to thank them for sending this for review. And I want to talk a little bit about the configuration tool programming tool and you can purchase the programming tool with the receiver you don't have to purchase it separately I did set everything up I programmed it into my TX16S I've got a brushless motor hooked up to it I've got three micro servos hooked up to it and I've got the gyro modes all set up and everything seems to be working just fine so I want to give you some more information on the programming tool. Now, apparently they've got two different types of programming tools or two different versions of this programming tool. Uh, one of them has a three-wire connector and one of them has a four-wire connector. Now, this one has a four-wire connector and this one is for programming the um, AR3207G. Okay, so there's a there's a little white switch on the side of the programming tool and the positions are labeled 1 and 2 and it uses Roman numerals so for 1 you've got a, a single I and for position 2 you've got a double I so position 1 and 2 for this particular board you want to make sure that the switch selector is in position 2 with a double I and I'll put a picture of it up on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about Okay, so and when you're when you're going to be connecting your your programming tool to the receiver, to change either settings in the receiver or settings in the gyro, you want to make sure that you do not have a battery connected to it when you connect it to the to the USB port on your computer because the the uh, programming tool and the USB port will provide power to the receiver. So do not connect your battery to the receiver. If you're going to connect it up to the USB port uh, and the programming tool. All right, the gyro mode LEDs. It has a blue LED on the board, and when the LED is flashing, that means that the gyro is in high sensitivity mode. When the LED is solid blue, then it is low sensitivity mode. And when the LED is off, you're in full manual mode. There's no input from the three-axis gyro. All right, so one thing that I found when I was programming the gyro modes into my TX16S, okay, I always set up my gyro modes on the same switch, which is switch SG. My default position for all my switches are all four, you know, all, all, all pushed in the, in the back position away from me. Alright, so I wanted to make sure that the high sensitivity gyro setting was when the switch was in its default position, which is pushed all the way forward. I wanted the middle position to be low sensitivity and the forward position pulled toward me uh, to be manual mode. That's why I, I like to have my, all my gyro mode set up. Well, even if I change the offset on the switch positions from minus 100 to plus 100 or plus 100 to minus 100 it didn't seem to make any difference on the 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 um, orientation or the order of the gyro modes so I it always seemed to want to put the manual um, the manual mode uh, manual mode of the gyro in the forward position and the high sensitivity in the position toward me and I didn't want that I wanted to reverse so then I went in and I reversed channel 5 because the gyro is set up on channel 5 and then that worked. By reversing channel 5 then I had the modes in the order in which I wanted them which was high sensitivity with the switch all the way back, low sensitivity with it in the middle, manual mode with the switch pulled all the way forward toward me. Okay, so I just wanted to give you guys that tip uh, because that was the way I was able to get it into the uh, order that I wanted it in. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to show you is we're going to go ahead, I did a screen capture 
when I went in to uh, test the the configuration uh, software, the the uh, programming tool and the configuration software. I will provide a link in the show notes for downloading the software that you're going to need. So what you want to do is you want to download the software, install the software. I installed it on my uh, Windows 10 uh, operating system and uh, I didn't have any problems with the installation of the software. It installs the drivers for the configuration tool. Okay, so once you get the software installed, then what you want to do is you want to connect the configuration tool to the, to the receiver. Do not have a battery connected to it. And then connect the receiver and the configuration tool to the USB port. So that Windows identifies the configuration tool and loads the proper drivers. And then launch the software. You'll see there will be, there will be a bar at the top of the screen that shows connect and disconnect. So if it doesn't automatically connect, to the configuration tool, just select connect. I didn't have any problems, it went flawlessly. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my screen capture of this configure of the configuration tool and the software and I'll, we'll go through all the tabs and we'll look at all the configurations. Right now I've only modified one setting on the receiver for using the configuration tool. I want to see I want to see how, how well it works with its default configuration before I modify any of the gains on the gyro for high and low sensitivity. So anyway, here's the screen capture. Right now we're connected. I'm at the home tab. So um, let's just go through the tabs here. Profile. It'll give you the, uh, the name of the device. I've got the AR3207G-D, which is the DSM2 DSMX protocol. Telemetry is enabled. Temperature measurement is enabled. Um, shows you the RF power, serial number, and the version of the firmware. You can also do a factory reset here, or if you make any changes, you can save it, or you can reset it, or do a factory reset. Okay, so uh, let's go. You've also got logs that you can take a look at. You've got pr their promotions. You've got a support page, which basically brings up their Q&A here and access to the manuals. And then firmware, you can tell it to um, check for updates on the firmware. And you can also use this tool to update the firmware on the receiver or the um SR3X gyro. We go to ports. You can see the port settings. The only I did change something in here and then programmed it into the receiver. The servo um, cycles in milliseconds was set all the way down for 10 or 12, excuse me, 12. And I increased that to 22 because that's how I also have it set in my transmitter. If you if you have it set for 12 millisecond instead of higher, if you get any jittering in the servos from the from the gyro system, then they recommend that you increase this number. But since I, I already have it set for 22 millisecond in my transmitter, I'm going to go ahead and set it for 22 milliseconds here. I don't think that those micro servos that I'm using are you know real high speed. Uh, digital servo, so I'm, I'm going to leave that at 22 millisecond. All the ports are set for PWM on the receiver. Right now I have uh, all of them in uh, their normal, except for channel 5 and the transmitter. I do have reversed so that I could get the, um, the order of the gyro modes and the order in which I wanted them. Okay, so your ports for DSM2, DSMX, your first four, four ports are throttle, aileron, our throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder, um, and those are all correct. Now, whether I'm going to have to reverse any of those channels yet, I don't know. I won't know really until I get it in the plane and get the servos connected to um, to the control surfaces to see if I need to to change any of those. Of course, I could change those on the transmitter. I don't have to change them in here. All right, but if, if you didn't have if you if you didn't have a way of changing the the um, normal or reverse direction in your transmitter. You can actually do it here with this GUI tool. All right, so 
that's the only thing I changed so far. I'm going to leave everything in its default settings until I determine if there's anything else that I need to change. All right, so let's go into the SR3X tab. And the model type is normal, so it's a traditional plane. The x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis are all in the normal direction right now. If, you, if the gyro is correcting in the wrong direction, then this is the place, I believe, where you would change it from normal to reversed. It doesn't have a phase button on the receiver, so you have to do that from this uh, graphical user interface programming tool. So, you know, I'm not sure what the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis, I'm not sure what those are as far as the control axis. I will have to determine that. Uh, and I'll be able to determine that if I have to if I had to ch if I have to change any of these So if it's if it's correcting in the wrong direction Like if once I get it set up Get everything in the transmitter working in the proper direction and if I tilt the nose down and the elevator goes down Then it's corrected in, in the improper direction and then I would go ahead and come into GUI tool and then change the direction in which the gyro is correcting that that pitch the pitch axis same thing with the roll and the yaw axis okay control mode by default is set up on channel five that's how i have it set up in my uh transmitter on my three position switch i have it set up for channel five all the modes are working properly you have an option here of mounting type now i'm going to mount mine horizontally in the plane but you can also choose flank and what flank means is that you're going to have the you're going to have the um, receiver gyro board installed vertically so it would be you know like if you were if you were going to attach it to the side of the fuselage and have it in a vertical orientation then you would set that in here okay so and we've been to the profile, we've been to the home page. So uh, right now, let's go back to the SR3X. You can see that in, in the low rate mode, everything is set for 45 on the gain. And it goes from, the gains go from zero, where there's no input from the gyro whatsoever, to 125. So right now, by default, the default settings for this are 45 on the gain, from 0 to 125 on all three axes for, uh, excuse me, for the low sensitivity at 45. The high sensitivity is at 65 on all three axes, which is just a little bit over 50% on the gain. I think those are good starting points, and it depends on how quickly you want it to be able to react, uh, how quickly you want it to be able to level out the plane. Now in high gain mode, I want to I, w I want it to level out the plane pretty darn quickly because if I'm putting it in a high gain mode, like if I'm using this for a parachute button, it means I'm really in trouble. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm really in trouble and I need it to level out the plane quickly. So I, I will see how this works with the gain set at 65. And, it, and if I feel like that is not... Uh, leveling out the plane quick enough then i will come back in here and i will increase the gains on all three axes on the um on the low gain rate the ones that are all set for 45 right now well i'll have to see how that works out i would like it just to smoothly level the plane out you know not quickly that's the mode that if i'm using the gy if i'm using the gyro that's the mode that i will probably i would be flying in most of the time to counteract things like wind so i don't want it to be real abrupt um, but in in the high gain mode i do want it to be abrupt because i want it to be able to save the plane so so anyway these are all the tabs that you have available in this utility it was a piece of cake um, to get everything working i didn't have any problems whatsoever okay so now that you guys have seen the configuration software and it's pretty straightforward and it's pretty easy I want to go ahead and give you a bench test okay so we can see that the blue LED is flashing so I have got the gyro mode and high sensitivity mode right now so 
there's my aileron servo hopefully you guys can see that on the camera there's my elevator servo and rudder you can see that everything's working let me grab the motor here motor is spinning up just fine put the safety switch back on okay so now let's see this is the aileron and I've got it in high sensitivity mode so watch the aileron servo as I let me hold it here watch the aileron servo as I move it okay so you can see that the roll axis is moving the aileron servo correcting the aileron servo and then here we have the elevator so if I move it in this in the pitch axis you can see that the the, rec the receiver the gyro is moving the elevator servo and then if I pick up the rudder and move it in the yaw you can see that it's correcting the yaw on the servo so everything seems to be working fine we'll go ahead and we'll put it in low sensitivity mode and then you have a solid blue light and then if I put it in manual mode the light is off and the red light just shows that we're bound up back to high sensitivity mode so that it, everything is working the motor is working you know the ESC the three axis gyro all the ports are working so um, the next time that you guys see this will be when we take it out to test it in an actual aircraft thanks for watching and I will see you in the air